This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling podcasting network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts, as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. And I say, hey, what a wonderful kind of day. If you can learn to work and play, and get along with each other. You got to listen to your heart. Welcome everybody to Wednesday War Games, episode 7. I did a nice intro, but then Liam interrupted me out of petty spite and malice. So here's our low en- energy intro, where I've been defeated and conquered by the, the petty spite and petty malicious intent of Liam Jones, who is my co-host. Hello, Liam. Got him. He just, I was like, oh, hey everybody, welcome to our podcast. And Liam's like, it's real warm today. I'm like, Liam... That I'm doing the start of the podcast. And then he tried to derail it. And I was like, no, we're actually going, this is actually the start. But then he stopped recording. So he, he double, he double spited me. And this is what I have to deal with everybody. This, I, I was like, Hey Liam, you're my friend. Do you want to do an AEW podcast? And he's like, and I said, no, (laughs) actually, yes, he said no first. And then I was like, uh, well, you were actually my second choice. And he was like, Oh, and that that made him. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. It wasn't <laughs> your second choice. Yeah, yeah, you were. You were the second person I asked to be co-host, so you were by default my second choice. <laughs> I don't want this to be the intro. No, nope, it's the intro. AEW and NXT, as no, usual, went head to head. No, that's awful. Every Wednesday night. I'm steamrolling you. This That's the intro to our podcast. That's, that's so the, awful. This is this is what you brought on us. You have brought us say, into it's the. It's not even warm. I did the whole interruption about it being warm, but it's actually quite chilly. Well, for you, chilly is like seventeen degrees, and that's like it's fifteen hot. degrees. It's actually chilly here, which I didn't want to get out of bed because I watch NXT in bed, and then I have to actually get out of bed to talk to you about this pod- these shows. So this is real a bad day for me all round, Liam. Cancel the podcast. We're done. And then you were late, you were like, oh, people are making noise, we have to be an hour late, so I got a chicken roll, and then you called me while I was eating my chicken roll, so I had to scoff down my chicken roll. Everything is going wrong! Except for pro wrestling on Wednesday nights. As usual, we have AEW and NXT. AEW won last week, continuing their streak of seven, seven. Are we on six or seven? This is episode seven, isn't it? So it's six straight weeks of victory. We were talking about the episode last week, and we were off, so... Yeah, and we were, we were the week before I introed the podcast episode five or four, and it was yeah. episode five, so I had to edit out me saying what episode number it was. Well, way to silence the truth. Well, silence my stupidity. The the good thing about <laughs> well, editing if you did a podcast, that, there'd be no bloody podcast. <laughs> well, I was gonna say the good thing about editing the podcast is God. you can give yourself the the hero edit and edit out all your bad stuff. But then you're like, all your stuff is bad. Liam, why are you so mean to me? This is episode seven. This is episode 7. As usual, we're covering All Elite Wrestling first, because All Elite Wrestling is still undefeated on Wednesday War Games, as they're <laughs> undefeated in the ratings. We open the show with a recap of Full Gear, followed by John, Mo- or the other guy, Kenny Omega, being very mad that he's all beat up. I love, I loved Kenny's line, where he's like, the doctor tells him, you're not cleared tonight. And Kenny's like, what about Mox? And he's like, he was pretty beaten up, but he is cleared. And Kenny was pissed. <laughs> Oh, Kenneth, you on your bizarre adventure between multiple wrestling companies and getting banned from countries and not being able to wrestle. So pissed that New Japan have kicked him out of the country and he couldn't beat up John Moxley more than John Moxley could beat up him. And like they showed some cuts on his back. I think the, the black eye they gave him was makeup, but the cuts on his back looked nasty. Yeah, I'm going to be honest, I missed this segment, that's why I was <laughs> deflecting. You skipped over, the. you just skipped straight to John Moxley against Michael Nakazawa? No, because I, I started watching the stream live, and it was a minute late. <laughs> oh, when well, you didn't go back, for the sake of podcasting professionalism, you didn't go back and watch it. I am an amateur in everything I do. John Moxley beat Michael Nakazawa in a match that apparently was 45 seconds, but still seemed like 15 seconds too long. <laughs> How dare you? This is ruled. She should have hit him with the DDT and pinned him, but they did some forearms, and then he hit him with the DDT and pinned him. They were shown that Nakazawa was fired up for his friend. It was his, his AEW Dynamite debut. He was fighting on behalf of Kenneth, and then he got killed. Yeah. I actually did like the little tweet that he sent out about how he was doing it to prove that the friendship wasn't so one-sided. Well, what do you mean? How is it one-sided? 
Well, let me find the tweet. Mox beat up my best friend Kenny. I knew there would be no way I could beat him, but it didn't matter. I had to do it for myself, not for Kenny. I didn't want the friendship just to be given. I wanted to deserve it. I lost the match, but somehow I don't feel too bad. <laughs> I love the idea that's like, I knew I'd be beaten in a minute, but I had to be beaten in a minute for the sake of my friend. Yeah, he was doing it to prove something to Kenneth. Would you fight John Moxley in a losing battle for me, Liam? I'd win. Oh, well... I guess that is—is is it noble if you think you'd win? Probably no, because <laughs> at that point it's just narcissistic. <laughs> That's true. John Moxley then cut a promo after the match, being like, "I beat up Kenny, and then everyone else in this company is a bunch of bitches who won't fight me. Somebody should fight me. Come down here and fight me." And then no one came and fought him. Yeah, I was gonna yes. say. I thought I really thought this was setting up for like someone to come out and yell at him. Yeah, this is like I suppose like we'll get to it later. Someone does eventually accept his challenge, but. Nobody there, nobody, everyone's like, nah, I don't want any right now. You know what it felt like to me? It felt like the classic, like, WWE trope of, like, someone calling someone out and then, like, then then it was, like, a big debut. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I was like, holy shit, who's gonna, like, come out? (laughs) You thought it would be Marty, didn't you? I might have thought it would have been Marty, but it's Uh, not because I actually thought that'd be a good spot for him, it's because I just want Marty to show up. (laughs) And the WWE formula has beaten the idea into your head over and over again that that's what should happen. Hmm. I really want Marty <laughs> in the company, man. It's probably going to happen eventually. Unless he goes to NXT. I'll be super bummed out. But you watch both shows. You should be like, whoop, whoop. Well, no, yeah, I watch both shows, but I think I still think he'd be a better fit in one. Hey, he'd work at NXT. He's one of those people who'd like, he'd, be, he'd die a death on the main roster, but he would do well in NXT. I just think there's stories to tell with him in AEW that I'd well, like they- to see. He can't have needlessly long matches with Okada anymore. I mean, he can. <laughs> oh, yes, well, you, you can go to another company and do that, I suppose. That is true. Uh, I'm still fighting for there being a Bushi Road AEW connection. Eventually. I will never give up on it. It's all a work. Everything's a work. The Dark Order defeated the Jurassic Express, the Jurassic Express combination of Jungle Boy, Mar- Jack Perry, and Marco Stunt. In a perfectly fine match. The Dark Order, the Dark at least Order is starting to work. Yeah, they're at least finally starting to, like... it. Like th- They told you they're a cult the whole time, but like they- they've never done anything remotely cult-related. They've just been mean-looking guys who beat people up and have mediocre matches. And at least after this match, they finally had Evil Uno get in the mic and be like, Hello, Marco Stunt, would you like to be one of my minions? And Marco Stunt was like, Hmm. <laughs> he was like, Hmm, and then he should have flossed. That would have been the most revolting thing I would have ever seen in my life. So I'm guessing you're anti-floss in wrestling? There was that phase when everyone was flossing? I'm anti any trendy dance in wrestling. It's just like, no, don't do it. I think you're anti-dance. I am anti-dance. Unless it's like, like interpretive dance. That's art. I'm just thinking of the one time I was in class and I did interpretive dance as like a comeback to a teacher. What was the, the question? <laughs> okay, if I remember correctly... Mm-hmm. I was being dismissed from the class forcibly. Why? What did you do? Were you a troublesome student, Liam? I I, I might have been a troublesome student growing up. And um, I was being ejected from the classroom. And I, was, I said something about... Like, they were yelling at me for jumping around, and I just said something, it's interpretive dance, and I kept going. <laughs> and, I, and they just got progressively angry at me as I was dancing in front of the classroom. As someone who spent six months teaching students, I hate you. <laughs> You're the problem with the world, Liam. As someone who was pro, I was, I wasn't really, there was only one teacher with whom I had like real problems with, but I insist she started it. So <laughs> other than that, I was a perfectly pleasant student, so I cannot relate. I, I came from like a school that was like religious <laughs> hmm. and like, and we all kind of had a, Every, like, five or so years, there would be a year level that was just the troublesome year level. Mm-hmm. And that was my year level. So you're saying you were the Ricky Gervais of this religious school? Well, no, because it wasn't, like, atheist stuff. It was just boredom towards, and maybe a rebellious... Maybe I was the original heavy metal rebel. So that's why you relate with the Dark Order, is what you're saying? Yeah, that's why I want to floss with the Dark Order, I believe, is what I was trying to get around to. You would have accepted the mask from Evil Uno. 
Oh, for sure. But I want his mask. His mask is way cooler than the minions. Or the creepers, whatever they call them. The, what, they're minions. I don't care. I don't care. Well, they, they're called the creepers. But fine. <laughs> Uh, after the after Marcus Hunt declined, they beat them up. The match was it was a, a decent. match. It was a pretty fun match, I will admit. I I was I was like one of those things. Where I was just sitting there. I was like, you know, this isn't gonna make like an end of the year list or anything. But like, this is just fun. Jungle Boy is great. Yeah, and the now newly dubbed Grayson, no Stu, he's just so much fun to watch too. He does stuff that you think you're gonna die, bro. And JR had a rare good line as like <laughs> Grayson's getting over the loss of his first name. <laughs> Le- <laughs> That's great. Um JR likes Grayson. Like Because he's like super impressive and athletic. You, you can't. Yeah, like, but not like, like so him. are a lot of people on this roster and he doesn't like them. <laughs> Apparently Grayson goes for pinfalls enough for him to get over it. I was just he he puts over Gra- every time I watch a Dark Water match, I just note how much <laughs> Jim Ross likes Grayson. What it's do you weird. think of the choice to drop the stew? I, I, I think Stu Grayson is a weird name for a stable called the Dark Order. It's like Evil Uno and Stu Grayson. It's like, that's yeah. not a very malicious sounding, but he, like neither is Grayson really. But eh, Evil I, Uno I, and Grayson. I, I have no real take on it. But Grayson is for the good superheroes. Sure. It's a Nightwing reference, Garrett. I, I, I watch Titans, I know. <laughs> Can we turn this into a Titans review podcast? Have you watched any of season two? I have not watched season two. Season one put a bad taste in my mouth by the end of it. Why? I didn't like the last episode where they did like the alternate reality deal. That's well, that's a trope that they do in every comic book show. It's like, all right. Yeah, but like, don't do it for your big like finale episode when I'm trying that's, to get answers that's to true. things that, that are happening. That's, that's an episode of the week. That's not a finale. Yeah, like that's what bummed me out about it. But I've I've still heard that season two was about the same level as season one. So I've seen the first episode of season two. Oh, I was gonna. I was gonna say spoilers. All right. But um, did you care? <laughs> did the people care? Did you care about Titan season two spoilers? Well, I don't remember. I watched it like two weeks ago, so I don't remember what happened in the first episode of Titan season two. But oh, uh, 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 spoilers for Titan season two. Um, <laughs> when Dick Grayson does take on the Nightwing man, man, mantle, mantle, mantle. There when he go. takes on the Nightwing mantle, um, I will be very excited because um, Nightwing is my favourite superhero and he's very rarely represented in live action cinema. He's represented in the most important live action cinema of all, Liam. WWE Monday Night Raw! Is he? <laughs> the Ricochet Nightwing gear. Oh. Sh- sure. That's the most important representation of, of Nightwing that you could possibly need. It's all you need. What about AW Wednesday Night Dynamite? After the match, they beat up the Jurassic Express and Luchasaurus made a return hitting his weird... Luchasaurus is weird. <laughs> He's such, like, a weird thing to be the coolest. He's, like, awkward and gangly and, like, some of his stuff kind of looks like shit, but some of it looks amazing. His tail whip was kind of messy on this one. <laughs> and, like, so, with some of the creepers running at him on the ramp. <laughs> <laughs> Not great. I like Luchasaurus, man. There's like a whimsy and a charm to his not greatness. And like he does like his step up dives and the standing moonsaults are objectively great. As Jungle Boy says in his episode of Wrestlers Eating Room Service, everyone liked dinosaurs at once. And if they didn't, they're an asshole. That's true. Dinosaurs are object- the gi- dinosaurs are like a universal light. Th- mostly because we killed them all off and they can't hurt us. Yeah. Are dinosaurs your favourite animals because they won't revolt? Yes, they won't revolt because they're all dead. They lost to the meteor and then the ice age. They lost to the meteor? <laughs> yeah. Listen, there's been extinction events before and we're still here. So suck it, dinosaurs. What extinction events have we avoided? I don't know. There has been like, there's been a couple of extinction events in, in the history of mankind where like 95% of the Earth's population has been wiped out. This is now a history podcast. Yeah, there's like there was like one in Russia. I can't remember what it was. There's where like an entire forest was eradicated by a, a, a meteor, and that created a worldwide extinction event due to the impact. But we just like said, this fuck up. it. Yeah, we don't care. We're cool about it. Most importantly, we have the Jungle Boy Luchasaurus theme back together, so that makes me happy. Poor Marco. Mar- like Marco's fine as like the guy who takes bumps for people they're wrestling, like. I- 
if, if you're like, do you want to see Marco as a re- regular wrestler on the show? I'd probably say no. Do I have any objection to Marco's role on this show? I would also say no. I'd be curious to see how he does to a non-hardcore crazy person audience like us. I think, like, Marco gets hipster backlash because he he got over as a meme and then all memes eventually get tiresome and everyone turns on the meme eventually. And, like, the cool kids have turned on the meme. But, like, Marco's, like, he's charming and likable. Leave him alone. He seems like a swell guy. Darby Allen versus Sean Spears versus Peter Avalon, which is sure a match to put on television. <laughs> like, I don't, I'm not sure if I'm a fan of just these random triple threat, random fatal four-way things that they do. <laughs> Give me a reason for this. Sean Spears made his entrance, and I was like, oh no, it's a Sean Spears match. And then Peter Avalon made his entrance, and then it's like, oh no, Sean Spears against Peter Avalon. And I was like, oh, maybe they're a team. Then Darby Allen made his entrance, and I thought, oh, the match is Sean Spears and Peter Avalon against Darby Allen and Joey Janela. But like, nope, it's a triple threat. But then Joey comes out anyway to run out Sean Spears, and Darby Allen gets. I, I suppose like the the end goal is Darby gets a win on television. I think that's basically the. Yeah, it's the, Darby gets a win on television and can cut a promo after. Yeah. And then you can advance uh, Janela in there too. But yeah, what a weird match. Alan against Spears against the librarian. Yeah, and of course it ends with Darby pinning Peter Avalon with the coffin drop. And gnarly coffin drop too. Yeah, it was, it was probably the best coffin drop he's hit on TV. It was a, that, that was an impactful one. And I think most importantly after the match, Darby Allen called out John Moxley. And it got a reaction. Darby's it a star, did. man. Dar- like Dar- Darby's over Darby's a- and rightfully so because Darby is great and after the John Moxley obviously made the open challenge at the start of the show and later in the show Darby Allen's like yeah I'll take you on and that match is next week so yay as much as I think the match may be better if it was some sort of no holds barred uh, plunder match I would prefer if it's just a straight up match because I want to see how they go in that uh, environment yeah and I don't want Mox to be pigeonholed as the hardcore guy as much as he can do that, I don't want to see him do that every single damn week. I also, I don't need to have that kind of, like, this is a different topic entirely, but I don't need to have that kind of match on every single AEW big show, I feel. They've, they've had a lot of them, haven't they? Like, it's, it's very TNA in that, like, we have the Abyss match where he just falls through thumbtacks. And that's, AEW has kind of done an equivalent of that on the majority of their shows. Yeah. I would prefer... The that was weird. Prefer the big New Japan style epic main events, like that. Mm. Like I want Kenny to do that more so than I want him to do random Attitude Era plunder turned up to eleven. Which I'd imagine, I don't think he'll be doing that unless he's so obsessed with Moxley that he can't get away from it. I just, I mean, like in general, not necessarily Kenneth. He was just an easy um, example. Nyla Rose defeated someone named Danny Jordan. Squashed her. Not that much to I had it. That, I had that later on my list. You, you forgot it happened? No, I just I had it later down on my notes. Well, what did you have happening between now and then? Uh, a, a, a promo that we're probably going to talk about next. Yeah, uh, Dustin Rhodes is injured, out for a while. There's, I think they said, like, four weeks. But he will be on commentary for AW Dark. Nice. And next week we have a 12-man battle royal for a diamond ring. It's it's a, it's a battle it's a WCW thing that did Battle Bowl but like why? Is this a mid-card title? The ring? Is the ring a mid-card title? I, I, I'd imagine not. Cody likes to do that he made the Ring of Honor title a ring. He did he does love his rings. And I want like I thought they were gonna be like and the winner gets a ring and the number one contendership or something but. Or even if it's like a ring and $100,000 but no it's they get a ring. <laughs> A diamond ring? It is a diamond ring. It's probably of some what if value. It's, what if it's like something that's going to end in like a proposal? <laughs> who's well, who's who's not Kip Sabian? Us? Kip Sabian wins it and proposes to Penelope Ford after. And then Joey Janela gets pissed. <laughs> did, did, did you see that Joey Janela tweet about that? No. Um, someone asked him on Twitter, uh, "Are you going to feud with Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford?" And he said, "I'd rather go back to delivering pizzas." <laughs> At least Kip Sabian. Oh yeah, we never mentioned Full Gear. Full Gear was on Saturday. Yeah, I was thinking since we didn't mention it, maybe we could like do a little cut and we'll do like a, a separate Full Gear thing, even if it's just like a fifteen minute thing. Uh, do you want to talk about it at the very end? Yeah, well, we'll talk about it at the end. Just a quick little rundown of Full Gear. 
So if you want full gear takes, it'll be at the very end, even after NXT. Even after our self-promotion. <laughs> yes, we'll, we'll do the plugs and then, hey, full gear. Uh, Ali got beat up by Awesome Kong. She's killed twice in a year now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really scared about that knife, man. Do you think she's going to accidentally cut somebody? Maybe. Or, like, I thought about when she was flipping it out. What if she just flicks off her finger and goes into the crowd? Yeah, she's doing, like, the knife twirling, like Shane McMahon does with a kendo stick, except with a knife. So, yeah. yeah it's it's like, cool as shit. Point? What do you think uh, of this whole Awesome Kong brandy thing, now that we've seen it as an actual angle? Uh, it's strange. Uh, I, w- I wonder if they're going to do some weird voodoo crap, where, like, she's controlling the people who think, no, well, please don't do that. <laughs> yeah, that's a little too far. <laughs> One way. Or it's like Bea Priestley and Ali are in her stable because she's manipulating them via voodoo. <laughs> I was sad that like Ali is finally on Dynamite. It's like it's Ali. Oh yay, Ali's on. T- oh no, she's just no. fodder for Kong and Brandy. I I really hope Kong will be able to go when it's necessary. I really hope they do something with Ali. It's a, it's, she's just dude. She's doing nothing. Poor Ali. Ali's great. Do something with Ali. A W. I don't know, man. All of her dark performances, she's been, like, the weakest person in the match. All those dark matches are bad, though. <laughs> They're not, though. They are. We've reached an impasse. I say as someone who's half-watched them. Let's move on to something Wait, good. before we go, I want to do one more thing. What? As someone who's probably seen more Awesome Kong matches than a majority of the people listening to this, mm-hmm. and who has witnessed a number of Awesome Kong attires... Mm-hmm. What do you think of Awesome Kong's new gear? It's, it's pretty good. It's so bright. It's very bright. I like. Remember she had that old like bright red gear in TNA? Yeah. Awesome cool. Kong's the best, man. Yeah, it's a shame she's like old and her knees are gone. And her back it's, is gone, especially, just, I think. But It's just time. <laughs> mm. Time will come for us all. But I hope Awesome Kong will be able to deliver when it's necessary, because I think a, like a match with her bullying Riho would be really cool. Yeah, at the very least, I want a cool match of her beating the crap out of Rio and Rio making their big Gail Kim comebacks. Yeah, if we can get that, this whole run will not be for naught. And then, of course, we'll transition into Brandy Rhodes against Rio, which is the more important match. <sighs> Yay. La Champion! Chris Jericho arrived and gloated, like, even before MJF showed up. This Jericho promo was great. <laughs> yeah, I want Jericho to get a 10 minute talking segment every week. So Jericho's like, Cody is an entitled millennial son of a bitch and I beat him and everyone in Nashville's a hick. And then Cody's music hits and I was like, whoa, wrestling. People really hate the term hick. <laughs> well, I'd imagine like this is the go-to cheap heat for like everybody in Nashville. So they're probably... And they're just like, ugh. <laughs> yeah. It has, like, an extra layer of hatred because it's kind of lazy. <laughs> That's the the best insult to lazy insults. Yes, there's a, there's a meta layer of hatred underneath it because that's the go-to everybody mocks Nashville by calling them hicks. Makes sense. So Cody's music hits, everyone goes nuts, the, the big chandelier rises, it's MJF. That and- was so good, man! <laughs> He's the biggest heel you probably see on television in a very long time. Like actual heel, not like Baron Corbett standing out there and people like oblige him and eventually get bored. They're not like, booing because they have to. They're booing because they don't like him. Cody is their hero, their savior, and MJF screwed him over. And then MJF cuts. I will say about MJF's promo. I think MJF's promo was tremendously well delivered. But I like I I wanted more for like why he turned like why yeah. did, why did you choose that moment to turn on him and he's like Cody uh, Cody is actually the bad guy and then give me the why why is uh, Cody the bad guy I think that they may be saving that for when he's not in the ring with Chris Jericho that's true Jericho was like <laughs> MGF comes out and it's like uh, Chris one minute I have something to address and <laughs> I like the way Chris is like carry on <laughs> yes of course of course my son. <laughs> Oblige. Uh, and then MJF does his big promo as a tremendously well delivered. That man is 23 years old on national television in front of a very good Nashville crowd and like doesn't miss a beat. He's he's on. I know that comparing MJF to other wrestlers is like a tired thing at this point. Mm-hmm. But while he was cutting that promo, I was like, he has the exact same cadence as Punk. <laughs> like nice. when Punk would cut those promos, like not, the, not like content wise, whatever, but like the way he spoke. And the, he had the same cadence as Punk did. 
MJF is rich, and that means he's better than you. Just replace straight edge with rich. Yeah. And basically, it's the same problem. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, eventually they go back to Jericho and they, they do a, a who who's on first routine where neither man wants to admit they want the other man in inner circle. So I'm going to say invite me. They're doing a 2002 Raw promo. That's what they're doing. I think the bit was fine the first time they did it. See, I didn't then, mind it either time. I'm just like, it, it was straight up like some 2002 Raw stuff. Yeah, but the second time they did it, it's like, all right, guys, you just did this joke. <laughs> so is MJF in the inner circle now? <laughs> Uh, well, uh, to, to, to Cody comes out, everyone's like, oh my god, oh my god, Cody's here. They bought a power slam, which, again, are, it's funny that people JR chooses to protect. It's like, the, the EVP botches a power slam and JR pops up. It's like, oh, it's the injuries from Saturday. If someone else did it, it's like, oh, that, that, that JR will grumble. <laughs> oh, they did it because they didn't take a pinfall. That was Vince, mm. that wasn't JR. You know, get on to JR more in the Hangman Page match. But, um... Yeah, Cody comes out, uh, MJF beats him up and chokes him with his tie after Wardlow appears. Yeah, Wardlow uh, with a Burberry tie. Yes, he's very fancily dressed because he is the the, 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 the thug of MJF. But yeah, they, they never officially said that he is in the inner circle. I don't think he should be in the inner circle, especially because you'd have to add Wardlow too, and that's seven people in the inner circle instead of five, and that's I far too many. They are inner circle adjacent, but not members. And I think they will do this bit... Where, like, they, they flirt with each other again. Yeah, there'll probably be a time where there's some sort of a backstage MJF Jericho interaction, and then, like, Hager and Wardlow, like, eye each other off kind of a deal. Just stand there looking mean. Yeah, it's like, look at my big tough guy, now look at my big tough guy. What, what were we saying about MJF before I pivoted to the end of the angle? Um, I, I was talking about if he was in the inner circle, I think, but that was it. Yeah, so I don't think so. Yeah, no. Um, MJF's great. We all knew this. How do you feel about them going for the more obvious route of MJF bad guy instead of the proposed route that we saw around a lot on Twitter that um, MJF would have come out of this the baby face with Cody turning on him? Uh, like, he's the biggest heel in the company. I can't say it didn't work. <laughs> and it's like, even if they tried that, it, I, like from what we saw at Full Gear with MJF... Like, he was in a sympathetic role there. Him throwing in the towel wasn't necessarily a heel thing, but that crowd wasn't going to let it be a, a babyface thing. Yeah, I think it was... If that was the finish they were going for for that match, I think the turn was the smart move, because Cody yeah. would have looked like an idiot otherwise. Yeah. I, I need an explanation of why, like... Was it just like, MJF was like, oh, well, he can't win the big one, fuck him, he's not worth it? Or was it like... We need some answers, MJF. We need to sit down with JR... That's what I wanted from this segment. That's, the, that's my, my biggest flaw in the segment, isn't that as good as MJF's promo was, he actually kind of just said nothing. Yeah, uh, like, I think we uh, wait for some sort of a sit-down. I want explanation of turns! You'll get it, I think. <laughs> or I'll just ignore it. Oh, the, the Chris Jericho Hoovy line in this promo was great as well. <laughs> and probably true. <laughs> probably true. He was conceived during a Chris Jericho Hoovy to Guerrero match on Saturday night. I don't think they ever wrestled on Saturday night. I think it's a lie. Oh no. They wrestled plenty of times, but I don't think it was on WCW Saturday Night. We can find out by going to the Voices of Wrestling Twitter at Voices Wrestling. Nice. The Bastard Pack defeated Hangman Page in a really damn good match. Probably a, a, a reasonable step better than their pay per view match. I liked it more than the pay per view match, and I liked the pay per view match a lot. Um, I just thought it played so well off of like going for the same spots and like teasing them, and yeah, it was. All around, just great stuff. Because yeah, they they teased the low blow again, and Paige blocked it again. But this time, Hangman, or this time, Pac got the better of it, and Pac went for the the brainbuster on the chair on the floor. But Hangman, which is a great spot. It. That looked that looks killer at full gear. Yeah, and he reversed into a, a very good looking brainbuster of his own on the floor. Our finish was Pac kicked him in the head a bunch, <laughs> and they kicked him head, in the head some more before hitting him with a black arrow and brutalizer for the win. Which I'm glad Pac won this. Uh, rubber match. Where do you think Pac goes? Kenny? Uh, well, I, I think Kenny's still got to do something with Mox. I don't think that's done yet. Mm. I like. I don't think it'll run its whole way to the next um, next big show. But I don't think that's the end of Mox and Kenny. Because like, I, I think the decision to put Pac over Hangman... Uh, pa- Paige has been, I think, successfully rehabbed since All Out. 
Page is back mm-hmm. to I think where he was before then. But like you don't put Pack over Hangman Page again here unless you plan to pivot to Pack versus somebody. Jericho? He doesn't really that's have a, a a top tier challenger. And that's heel versus heel. Was that would that work? You could maybe turn Pack Shades of Grey. I don't know. But like realistically, in a match between Pack and Jericho, Jericho's probably going to be the one that's going to be cheered there, not Pack. Yeah. All right. Let's again. It's like we say this often. It's like this company hasn't burned us enough to not give them the benefit of the doubt. So let's oh, yeah, see how it plays a, out. It's not a bad. I'm just interested to see where does it go. Like they're, they're setting off for something. The question is what. Hmm. I would have put Pack over here though. Mainly because. To me, Park is the lowest ranking main eventer, mm-hmm. and Hangman is the highest ranking upper mid carter, and I don't know if I'm ready to swap those two. Indeed. We had the Bucks brawling with uh, Proud and Powerful. This is great. They called Proud and Powerful enough that I will finally concede Proud and Powerful is officially their name. P and P. They brawled backstage, they, uh, they brawled into a bathroom in which Orange Cassidy was just standing in. This segment was brawls dives power bombs and lies yeah oh the live it was hilarious it's uh brandon cutler is like back off back off and they back off and then ortiz is like we lie and they continue on the, an- attacking. On the anniversary of eddie guerrero's death that's amazing and some um, and uh, it's a subtle like a subtle reference you know what i mean yeah, it's it's not like, like like I was gonna mention this during NXT, but like Mauro was like Hector or was it Beth? I think it might have been Beth. It was like Hector Garza is like Eddie Guerrero. It's like stop. Yeah, it was Beth. Talk, yeah, talking about Angel Garza. Oh yeah, Angel Garza. Yeah, it's like he's like Eddie Guerrero. It's like no, just just nobody is invoked more in the history of pro wrestling than NXT invokes Eddie Guerrero. Just stop it. It's it's definitely because like. The only matches they watch down there are Eddie matches, right? <laughs> it's clearly the only matches they watch in freaking tape study are, are Eddie lie, cheat, and steal matches. And yeah. that's, that's that's where their inspiration comes from. <laughs> I feel like let's get back to the uh, the PMP Young Bucks stuff. Because, like, I think it's hard to talk about because, like, what are we going to do? Just rattle off the spots that happened? But, yeah. <laughs> like, okay, let's do that then. They, they, they had a wild brawl, slammed through a table. Nick Jackson jumped off something again. Oh, oh no, Santana it was, jumped uh, off something. Santana, or, yeah, they're, they're taking turns jumping off of things. Um, they broke Nick's leg a bunch. Yeah, Orange Cassidy's in the bathroom, which was a good spot. A great reaction. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they, they brawled through the commercial, came back the other side of the commercial, then they were out in front of the stage. They attacked Nick Jackson's leg with a slapjack and then powerbombed a match through the, the stage. And yeah, Proud and Powerful getting their heat back after winning. So. As a as a fight TV viewer, I appreciate them giving us like some extended content by letting us watch the entire brawl. Oh yeah, you got to see how they got from the backstage to the ringside area, and you could hear someone yelling at Nick, "We're still at break, we're still at break." <laughs> and of course, this TV. segment ends with um, Private Party coming out and confronting Pride and Powerful, a uh, Proud and Powerful. Oh, fuck that up every week, and they confront them, and that match is made for next week. Along with uh, John Moxley against Darby Allen, those are two very good television matches, Liam. And we also get to find out who wins the Dynamite Diamond Ring. Sure, that too. <laughs> SCU retained <laughs> the World Tag Team Titles against Chris Jericho and the Spanish God Sammy Guevara in again another perfectly fine but not particularly memorable Chris Jericho television main event. Yeah, that's exactly what we expect. They, they had even another perfectly fine but not particularly memorable SCU title or a tag team match, but it was it's a pretty good match and it's cool seeing Kazarian and Jericho in the ring together. Yeah, two two old timey veterans it's like Kazarian been wrestling for I think they said twenty one years, Jericho for twenty seven. It's like good god. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not much to say about it. Unfortunately, like Scorpio gets the the roll up win on Jericho. If you had Scorpio Sky being the first person to score a pinfall over Chris Jericho on AEW, uh, you are a smarter man than I. <laughs> and f- uh, hopefully, I don't know, uh, Scorpio will get some sort of a singles title match as a TV main event. You know what I love? And like they're, They've done it twice now, if they do it. Like, Their two television title uh, challengers have been Darby Allen and hopefully Scorpio Sky. I love that. I, I love... Like, it's something New Japan don't do anymore. Or like, they just give Kojima a challenger of the month spot. And I'd be like, yeah, 
that's that's the kind of thing I want. I want someone from the undercard just getting world title shots on TV in kind of lower stakes matches, but they're cool matches designed to elevate Scorpio Sky or elevate uh, Darby Allen instead of just doing like main eventers against main eventers. I love mid carders getting world title matches on TV, Liam. Yeah, it's great. It's a fantastic trope, and everyone should do it. Like it's and it's because it's something that you know you don't expect to see. It's something different. And I also hope that we see the return of the pain maker as he, as he defends the title on TV once again. You think he's going to break out the pain maker for Scorpio Sky? Yeah, and Scorpio Sky is going to bring out his old mask that he used to wear. Everyone's going to have a good time. I did like Jericho's little hissy fit at the end of the show when he lost. <laughs> yeah, and then like no, you couldn't see Sammy anywhere during it. It's just <laughs> letting his dad like cool down. Throw the guardrail around, start hitting the guardrail with a chair as they went off the air. And Sammy's just like, "Yeah, let him, let him, let him get it out of the system." He's like, "Oh, I hate it when he gets it like this." And also, they 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 made that win feel more meaningful because Jericho's pissed about it. He's not just laughing it off. Yeah, and like, man, they are given this Scorpio Sky thing the good old try, aren't they? Well, it like the first week it really worked and. If you're like, hey, guard, uh, do you think Scorpio Sky will be a single star at AEW? My answer, I'd, I'd probably say no. I don't. I like, like. I don't think this will propel Scorpio Sky to new and greater heights. But why not try? Yeah, why not try with anyone? Like, give everyone a shot at it. Like, you never know who will be the one to connect. I didn't like the show live, and I like it more now. I still don't think the first hour was great. But the second hour I, was probably real good. This was the first time in. AEW Dynamite history that when we I reached the second hour I was like oh, that first hour was kind of meh yeah because it was like there was the Nyla Squash which was meh and the Jungle Boy Tag which was pretty good and the Moxley Squash which was a squash and yeah. uh, the, the Darby Allen match was three minutes it was like just too many bitty segments for my taste the most forgettable first half of a Dynamite for sure even if the it did do a very good job of returning Luchasaurus, or well, he got a good reaction, and John Moxley against uh, setting up John Moxley against Darby Allen, so it has that going for it. But the second hour was now that I look back on it, that second hour with the Jericho and MJF promo, and with the Hangman Page and Pack uh, brawl, and with the uh, match and with the LAX proud and powerful brawl, and then the pretty good main event, but notable main event, very good second hour. Yeah, basically. Give us that second hour all the time. Mm. Which takes us over to WWE NXT, which opened with Leo Rush against Angel Garza for the WWE or NXT, sorry, Cruiserweight Championship in a very good match. That, that God, I hate the NXT crowd. I was gonna save all that for later. <laughs> we're just gonna, we're getting straight into the NXT. Crowd. The way they react to things just never feels authentic. They're like whoa, 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 whoa. They're, they're like they're always leading the action, and it annoys me. It's like just cool your jets for 25 seconds crowd and respond to things organically i'm gonna disagree a little bit in that i prefer the nxt crowd when it's like this for like this kind mm. of match than when it's like roderick strong keith lee where they're just kind of sitting on their hands but still going whoa but you see the reason they're sitting on their hands is that because they like tire themselves out after two matches by like fake it's phony it feels phony and you can tell it's phony because they get tired of doing it by the end of the show yeah uh, you're not wrong but like <laughs> i wish they could keep up the phoniness if they're gonna do it <laughs> yeah it may take yeah work on your stamina and or nxt crowd if you're gonna be phony at least be phony for two hours yeah because like this match ruled <laughs> and that crowd i like they were working for me in the crowd like for this match for a match that I didn't care much about, that won eventually won me over in a big way, like I was fine with the crowd in this match. I prefer them to like this than I'd prefer them basically for any other segment on the night. Yeah, this was a real good match. Leo Rush retained the title against Angel Garza, and probably Angel Garza's best match I've ever seen him in. Yeah, exactly. I I, I haven't seen anything better. Um, the NXT Cruiserweight title has been such a welcomed addition to the show for me. Mm. Like so far, it's only been used as like the opening title, the opening match a couple weeks, but like. I'd still like it's still fun and both of those matches were really good so and Leo Rush is great so thank god he's back on television back on television doing like relatively uh, quick steal in the show style matches for a title that I like so shout, shout outs to Leo Rush now let's NXTFI that title and make it not purple I like the purple title grow up Garrett 
Don't you don't want to you don't want to erase two hundred five live from existence, Liam? Come on. Yes, you do. You want to erase it and never talk about it. Because except for like NX... those, except for that like one eight month run where it was really good. <laughs> With Big Bud and said yeah, just, cool matches. Yeah, just post Mustafa, Mustafa Ali. Ali. <laughs> post Mustafa Ali two hundred five. We just ignore. Cool, cool. Well, it's Buddy Murphy. Mustafa Ali left before Buddy Murphy. Okay, fine. I'll give Buddy credit too. He was delivering some pretty banger matches. Your big match, Buddy, Australian hero, probably the best. Is he the best Australian wrestler in the world? Today, it's either him or Robbie Eagles, hmm. or Will Osprey, who is spiritually Australian. Will Osprey is spiritually from everywhere. I I had a weird, awkward side hug with Will Osprey. He's one of us. Oh well, th- there you go. You've embraced him. Yes. <laughs> You've never given me a weird, awkward side hug, Liam. You've never wrestled in MCW, have you? Not yet. Oh, coming soon. <laughs> Tegan Knox and Rhea Ripley were attacked backstage because NXT love their backstage attacks, don't they? I didn't see this segment. <laughs> what do you mean you didn't see this segment? <laughs> On the totally legitimate TV stream that I watched this through, uh, didn't show it. <laughs> okay. So I missed this segment. They were jumped backstage. It's fine. It, it cut. It cut to Morrow talking about how they had been jumped, and I was like, "Huh." <laughs> uh, Zia Lee defeated Alaya after she but, kicked uh, her right yeah, in the yeah, damn yeah, face. Yay! 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 Oh, do we have flags? But no. Before before that, we got a recap of Shayna on Raw and SmackDown. Oh, I sc- that I skipped because who cares? I don't want to watch Raw and SmackDown. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you don't have to because they have a recap of Raw. And I don't Smackdown. even want to watch the recap of Raw and SmackDown, Liam. That's that's how I'm like. Ugh. Will you be watching Survivor Series? <sighs> I'll see if anything's good. I feel like I'm gonna watch any match that has an NXT superstar because I'm committed to the podcast and I'm committed to the bit. You're so professional. You didn't watch the segment we just talked about or the opening segment of AEW <laughs> for reasons. But you'll watch you'll watch Survivor Series. <laughs> I'll watch Roderick Strong versus AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura. That match would have been great five years ago, wouldn't it? <laughs> five years ago, it would have been like the three best wrestlers in the world. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Xia Li kicked a lie in the face and beat her. She, like, broke her nose. <laughs> Is Vanessa Bourne a manager or a wrestler? Couldn't tell you. Like, has she wrestled in I the time so, that we've yes. been watching this show? I don't think she's wrestled on this show, but I, I believe she has wrestled on NXT. Yeah, but that was before the USA era. So maybe is she out position out of that role now? She just stands next to Elia as Elia has her face broken by kicks. Yeah. Poor girl. She really kicked her in the damn face. But do you think that was meant to be the finish? Um no, it seemed weird, right? Yeah, it's, it seemed pretty sudden. Like he kicked her in the face, her face it's, is very much broken and then she It seemed her. like that was a shoot pin. <laughs> yeah. So she, your one is just uh, Eli is just like I'm not kicking out my face. Oh, like hurts. she's thinking, uh, <laughs> seeing stars. <laughs> yeah, she's not there. She's she's yeah. not there to kick out. She didn't even try. Thanks to legendary rapper Nas, I can use the reference that Jia Lee has more than a baby has. What I can't even more mm. than a baby. And a, I can't even. I got the quote wrong. It's dumb. <laughs> Oh, Sick. sorry, it has more kicks. <laughs> Thanks to the legendary rapper Nas, Zia, I can use the reference that Jia Lee has more kicks than a baby in a mother's stomach. I like that he references that he's referencing a reference. There was a point in the show where he's like, he referenced, I think, Yokozuna. I think Bronson yes. Lee did a Yokozuna move. And he's like, maybe one day Bronson Lee could do something and then I can reference it. And in my head, I'm like, the pinnacle for Mauro <laughs> is like somebody doing something that he can like that's the peak is him being able to reference something. Then you've made it if Mauro can reference you doing something. Yeah, he wants to be referenced. Uh Finn Balor came out. I I don't care about anything that um, happened before here. Before <laughs> that, we got a Killian Dane Pete Dunn recap. I don't care about match, the recaps, Liam. <laughs> for a match that shouldn't happen. Well, and it didn't, so... <laughs> the note that I wrote when I saw this was, oh no, a Dane match. Well, it didn't happen, so you should be happy. <laughs> uh, wait till we get to the my note for when we get to that match. <laughs> Finn Balor came out, and he's mean to Johnny Gargano again for some reason, and then Matt Riddle this is weird. attacked him. Like, what is, I, what is Finn Balor's character? He's Whiny angry. man? Like, why is he angry at Johnny Gargano? He's like... 
But there's such a, there's an easy story there, and they're not telling it. They're like, yeah, it's like the boys in the back aren't tough enough. There's this character, and that's just weird, man. Especially for Finn Balor. Why is that Finn Balor? Is Mr. Tough Guy Finn Balor? Why is Finn Balor doing a Silas Young character? He's like, oh, these boys don't have anything. When I was in NXT, they were men. It's like, <laughs> what are you talking about? And we got um, Riddle attacking Balor halfway that's, through. That He's been taken out of War Games to wrestle Finn Balor. And Dijak has, been take, has taken his place, but then they still don't have a fourth member. Velvet Team Dream. Probably. Uh, do you think this was the plan all along? If this is the plan all along, that's nope. doubly stupid. I don't. I don't necess- No, I don't think this was the plan all along. Well, you uh, were insistent that Dream was going to be in War Games, and I guess yeah. if this was the plan all along, then that kind of makes sense, even if it's stupid. And if it's something they decided to do as a, a replacement for John Boy being injured, I think it's also just kind of stupid. Yeah, but I thought it was going to be ACH in the War Games match with um, Lee, Dream, and. Champa. Oh, well, we know that's not going to happen. No. <laughs> Undisputed Era came out, Tommaso Ciampa and Keith Lee came out, they had a little standoff, and that led into a very boring Keith Lee against Roderick Strong match. I was so excited for this. <laughs> when they were setting it up, I was like, yes! <laughs> I saw the lineup for NXT, it's like, oh, Roderick Strong and Keith Lee, that's a fun match, and then they just went forever and did nothing. It was... I was like, it was good moves, but it was so lifeless. Yeah, <laughs> like they were just, just doing moves to a crowd that didn't really give a shit. There was no energy. There was no urgency. There's just meandering, doing moves for 17 minutes, and Keith Lee, and then they had freaking everyone brawled a little at ringside, but to the then finish, Finn and showed then, his abs, as one does. That's the man, pretty sweet. The man looks, the man looks good in the leather jacket and the pair, tight pair of pants. I'll give him that. It's almost as if he was some sort of a model. Yeah, Keith Lee beat Roderick Strong. Like, I forgot the Keith Lee one. Keith Lee won the match. You wouldn't even this match. This was so disappointing. Yeah, I was I was so excited for this match too. Keith Lee was wearing his nice trunks. So I was like, yeah, everything's cool. And then nope, just nothing. So after the match, we had uh, the 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 setup basically. Dijakovic made the save, and the setup him being added to War Games and Riddle being taken out. Then we go backstage where the Horsewomen have been murdered, which means what? It wasn't Shayna that did it. Who could have done it? And Candice LeRae was also there. And Scarlett was there. I blame Scarlett. I think she did the whole thing. So like, I guess. The idea here is we were meant to think it's Dakota Kai, right? I th- the idea here was at first we were meant to think it was Shayna because it was right. the opposing team. And then we're thinking, oh, maybe Dakota Kai retaliated. But then we also saw Candice. So mm. by then we click that it's someone from Raw Smackdown. So, like, was it Bailey? It was Bailey, yes. So they never tied a button. I didn't put that there. I was like... The implication was, it, was that it was Bailey going around doing it. That's kind of stupid. Which, because well, I didn't want it to be Bailey, I wanted it to be Sasha and Bailey. Or like I thought it was Kaylee Ray, but then I was like, oh wait, the Horseman. She had to. I thought like, oh Kaylee Ray's attacking them, and the setup is that we're supposed to think it's Dakota Kai, but then it turns out it's Kaylee Ray, and that's a twist. But like, no, she it's wouldn't. Just have, Bailey. She, yeah, yeah. It was. It was just Bailey. That's it's kind of just Bailey. That's a waste of our show running angle, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, sure, okay. Uh, in a match of the jobbers to the stars, which one of them is more of a priority to job to someone else next week? Uh, Isaiah Score of Scott. Actually, no, do, do we have uh, more quotes? Oh, we do for this match. Oh, we do for this match. Uh, <laughs> Isaiah Zerv Swerve Scott is clearly the bigger priority because he beat Bronson Reed and another just of again of the recent Thanks NCB Bronson sprints. Reed for your one match push yeah again and uh, Isaiah Scott will lose to somebody else next week and have his oh, one I match I hate push. it I hate it so much they're just they're like the, the people on the undercard just take turns winning and then losing to people who are more important. just let someone win and go on a bit of a run <laughs> Seriously, it's not that hard. And Roderick Strong I actually like this Isaiah match Scott too. in order to lose to Keith Lee. <laughs> yeah. I liked the match though. It was a bit long, but I liked it. I thought of the recent TV sprints it was the worst. Um 
what I wanted to say here, a little of the recent note, TV matches involving these two people, it was yeah, the worst. <laughs> probably, yeah. I wanted to make a little note here that um, after all of these like matches that Reed has, um, mm-hmm. he always shakes hands after, <laughs> and like it's only him that does it. But he always shakes hands with the person that beat him. So like, is he just gonna like beat someone up, and that's gonna be a subtle setup? It's his eventual heel turn in two years when they eventually get around to pushing him will be that he will shake hands and then attack them. <laughs> what am I saying here is, is Bronson Reed doing a subtle Dolph Ziggler gimmick? Sure. You don't get this reference? No, I don't. <laughs> Remember Dolph Ziggler's first character was that he would go around shaking hands? Oh yeah, and he was like, hey, I'm Dolph Ziggler. I forgot about that. Yeah. Wow. As strong as lighting up Lee's chest like John Wick... And the wick of this match is burning bright. I didn't even hear that one. I don't even get it. Like, what does John Wick have to do with lighting people's chests up? Other than... Shooting no! It, 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 does he shoot people in the chest a lot? Is John I Wick guess. known for his famous knife-edge chops? No, he's not. He probably double taps to the chest, yeah. The flyest in the room, Isaiah Zor's god, is so fly, he's a flight risk. Do you get the flyest in the room reference? Well, because I assume it's some kind of rap reference, because that's my It is a rap reference. Please explain it to me, Liam. To Travis Scott's latest single, Highest in the Room. Ah, that's the second time he's compla- uh, compared uh, Isaiah Scott to Travis Scott, isn't it? I assume it's because that might have been where he got the Scott name. <laughs> that might make sense. Yeah. Uh, that I don't mind the- Flies in the Room for a nickname, by the way. Like, as, on a show that has terrible nicknames like the original bro flies in the room ain't bad he doesn't do enough like proper flying for it if he if he was a more of a like pure high flyer i would agree but he's not mm. he's sort of a high flyer but he's fly like he's not flying he's but fly. like then but like but if he did flying things and he was cool it would be like a cool double meaning yeah but it's just a one and also he's a flight risk Maybe sure. he's a flight risk because he's not great at flying and he may hurt himself. <laughs> he might hurt himself, yes. Maybe that's Maro why just he's accidentally a risk. buried him. <laughs> <laughs> Killian Dane and Pete Dunne were going to have a match, but thank God. Before they... we get to that. Oh, did we have a recap? The did first I a recap? edition of Flagwatch. Oh, Flagwatch. What do you mean first edition? Like we haven't. Oh, first in this week. This show. week. <laughs> first right. this week. Um. <laughs> Backstage, we oh sorry, as my phone goes off, um, oh at John J Duffy is now following at War Games Pod. Thank you at John J Duffy. You followed us at the right time to get a podcast shout out. Boom. Um, backstage, we saw Pete Dunn doing some push-ups where he we had a lovely uh, sort of a beige coloured flag behind him, and I don't think this is a repeat flag. I think last time he had a flag, it was a British Strong Style flag. So now he has his own singles flag. Yes. And it was like really? kind of like an army man one. I want to see, is there an NXT PR email? And the email them was like, who's making these flags? And also, why aren't you selling them yet? That's true. There, there will be another flag later on. Killian Dane and Pete Dunne were going to have a match before Killian Dane was attacked by Damien Priest. Killian Damien, Damien Priest. Damien Priest. Turned into the biggest baby face for me because he ensured that I didn't have to watch this match. <laughs> what do you have against Pete Dunne against Killian Dane? I Liam? don't. Killian Dane's matches are just so boring to me. That's fair. It's like I didn't like the Riddle matches. I didn't really like anything else he's done. He was pretty good in the Sanity Tag stuff, but that's about it for me. Mm. I just I I see that he's got a match on the card, and I just kind of get a little sad. Damien Priest is sort of NXT's Luchasaurus. He kind of is, huh? Without the whimsy. Yeah. You know what this means, right? What? We're getting a War Games triple threat. Yeah. Oh, there's so many triple threats on all of these shows. It's God almost like it. they have 100,000 people employed. Like they're going to have two th- War Games matches. Yeah. <laughs> and they're going to have a triple threat. <laughs> and they're going to have Matt Riddle against Finn Balor. Like... And they're probably going to have another, like, an NXT Cruiserweight title match on that show as well. It's like, they have so many people, and they're trying to fit them all on these shows now. That's a lot of people. We're gonna, we're, I think longer and gone are the days of the five-match takeovers soon. It is pretty wild that, like, that they have ten people, or, no, it's four, it's four and four, so I guess sixteen people. Sixteen people taken up in the War Games matches, and they're still like, we have to cram a triple threat onto this show. Yeah. 
like as soon as I saw this happening, I was like, man, it just kind of dawned on me how many people NXT has employed. Oh, by the way, NXT the, the the War Games format is five minutes opening and then three minute intervals. Three minute intervals is too long. Cut it to two minutes. You're wrong. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Showed them, Garrett. They will they will change their plans now. Well, they'll do the matches. The matches will be on the boring side because they did three minute intervals, and then I will be proven right. So that's all that really I really need. All right, Cody. When you do the eventual Inner Circle versus Elite War Games match, do it our way. Yeah, do do five minute uh, five minute opening can be long too, but I'll accept that. But two minute inter- ninety second inter- intervals even also good. Three minutes too long. What if they're worked intervals and they're not actually that long? What's the point of calling the three minute intervals then? <sighs> make you mad Dakota Kai was backstage at Mia Yim and was like I'm gonna have your back and she did and while this is happening there was a flag in the background oh whose flag Mia Yim uh, Mia, Mia, Yim, flag? Mia Yim had her flag it's just her Titan Tron wow. like just the spray paid Mia Yim it's not the best flag we've seen you're disappointed the standard of the flags are dropping uh, no I don't think on a consistent basis they're dropping it's just Mia Yim she must have been, like, last in line to the flag giving out <laughs> section. And they're like, oh, sorry, we just have a screenshot from your Titantron. She's like, oh, she's probably jealous. She saw other people's flags. Like, hey, guys, where's my flag? And it's like, uh, uh, print it. Print it's like, the, oh, you, oh, you weren't here for flag day? <laughs> flag day at the PC? <laughs> flag day at the PC! <laughs> that sounds great. Oh, uh, our main event, Io Shirai against Mia Yim in a ladder match. And, like, what wasn't the greatest ladder match in the world, but Mia Yim died twice, so I can't yeah, really not call it. it. Yeah. I gotta respect her, because she got hit in the face with a ladder and really destroyed her face. And then she continued to work the match, and then she fell off a ladder through another ladder and literally died. Like, that's the, one of the worst bumps I've seen in a ladder match in a very long time. Worse in the sense that it looked devastating, not that it looked bad. Uh, in a ladder match that I've seen in a very, very long time. Very on par with the Nick Jackson tripping on the top rope and eating shit through tables bump. The, no, I meant, there's also the AC Romero um, fall off a ladder through a table. at so That one was really, just scary. There's actually been quite a few of these ladder bumps in the last three months. So I, I, I retract what I just said about Mia Lim oh, oh, being the worst. No. I'm sorry, Mia Yim. <laughs> But still, it, it looked devastating and amazing, and it looked like she had died. Uh, the ladder um, match, it was a pretty good ladder match. I'm not a fan was, of singles ladder matches. It wasn't, like, a great ladder match in general, but mm. it was a gro- a good WWE-style ladder match because yeah, it was like, kind of a bit more reckless than a normal WWE-style ladder match. Plus, you got to remember, they could, probably couldn't have gone as all out as they wanted to because they're doing a ladder match next week as well. For Adam Cole and died. Well, it's Adam Cole and Dijakovic, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but I imagine that one's going to be more spots. of a. That's going to be more of um, everyone running in sort of a deal. I think. This one was also probably a little too long. Yeah, I wasn't. I don't think so because I wasn't bored during it, so it's fine. And okay. I'm the one that matters. Uh, Dakota Kai came out. Uh, they obviously they didn't quite. Well, all right, tease. first of all, right here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Dakota Kai comes out, and mm-hmm. it's all well and good. Oh, the it's fine. Beth's fine with it. But then, as soon as Kaylee Ray comes out, it's this travesty that's costing that's costing the match for the baby face. I hate that. I hated that. There was bias on the commentary for this match. Well, you could argue Dakota Kai never directly got involved with Io Shirai until Io Shirai hit Dakota Kai with a moonsault. So it was fair retaliation on behalf of Dakota Kai. But why was she even out there? She was there because her friend Mia Yim just got her face broken with a ladder, Liam. This is silly, and they're picking favorites, and I don't appreciate it. I want uh, impartial. N- <laughs> I want impartial wrestling commentary. NXT UK champion or women's champion Kaylee Ray came out. She is the fourth and final person on Shayna Baszler's team. Uh, I did like that Nigel McGuinness was the one that identified her because he's British. <laughs> okay, he knows who she is because he he doesn't still do commentary on that show, does he? I I don't know. Um, is that a real show? No, it's not. She's an an imaginary wrestler who's an imaginary champion from an imaginary country. Imaginary country? Yeah. Did you mean to say company? No, I meant to say country. The United Kingdom? It's imaginary. <gasps> Doesn't, isn't Kelly Ray Scottish? Yeah. Alright, she's fine. <laughs> she's one of the good ones. 
<laughs> Ears or I won the symbol. <laughs> you step chase. over that. <laughs> uh, moving on. I actually don't. No, the the uh, uh, Maro kept cut. They hung a briefcase above the ring for the person. The the the, the numbers advantage in. I uh, nearly said lethal lockdown. Numbers advantage in war games. Um, and Maro's yes. like. Um, Eon Shirai has grabbed the symbolic briefcase and if you don't have something that makes sense to hang above the ring don't do a ladder match <laughs> yes we forgot a Mara quote oh, oh uh, the, the, one that the, d- diminished that amazing spot that you were talking about uh, I, I only wrote down one and that's they say a picture is worth a thousand words although today it's a thousand emojis um, ugh, okay. <laughs> Almost as bad as that. Um, Mia Yim takes this crazy fall through the ladder, right? We're all going, whoa, what are that? And Maro utters with his fucking mouth. Yeah. <clears throat> Holy bleep. The, 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 it's even worse because he was like, Mama Mia Yim. Holy bleep. <laughs> I went from going, whoa, to going, ugh. Uh. <laughs> you ruined that spot for me. <laughs> You, 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 just shut up, Marrow. If you're not going to curse, don't curse. Holy bleep. After saying Mama Mia Yim. Mama Mia Yim. Holy bleep. That's a shirt. <laughs> it's probably a terrible looking shirt if it's an NXT shirt. <laughs> but it's, it's literally just like the font that her name is in her entrance. <laughs> Mama, Mama Mia, Mia Yim. <laughs> and then on the back it just says, holy bleep. In like comic sans. Yeah, <laughs> Marvel really is walking comics. If we have any it? graphic designers that listen to this, please make that as a mock-up. I won't pay you. It'll be for exposure. All, all like hundred Twitter followers we have. <laughs> hey man, they're, they're a good bunch. Uh, yeah, good, good, not great ladder match. I thought it was a pretty fun show. Um, I thought the first match and the last match was good. Oh, so and what you're everything... saying is the normal NXT. <laughs> and everything in the middle was just kind of boring. Yeah. And I didn't like the first hour. Of it. Like, I went to NXT being like, hey, you know, if NXT is a good episode of NXT this week, they're going to take it pretty easy. Because right. I, didn't, I didn't come out of AEW all that hot. Yeah. And then NXT had that boring ass middle of the show. I guess the... for you, Garrett, uh-huh. I'm going to break it down for you. Was the first half an hour and the last half an hour of NXT better than the second hour of AEW? No. And also, the first hour of AEW wasn't as bad as the middle hour of NXT. Well, there you go. There's your answer. It is my answer. If if, if this was a good NXT week, NXT would have won. NXT are timing their bad, their good weeks badly. <laughs> yeah, like, it's, it's really what it is. Like, it's not necessarily that either one blows each other out of the water. It's just they got a time when they want to have a great show. <laughs> Yeah, it's like whenever AEW is not all that hot, NXT is just a little bit worse. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, come on, you can do it. We believe in you, NXT, you're close. Like, I, I legit went into the NXT thinking, like, I think this show's going to be better, and then it wasn't. What was your match of the day? Uh, First of all, a Twitter poll, 340 votes. Wait, I thought, I thought we were going to do that bit. I thought we do that bit last. <laughs> It does well, okay. Match of the day. It's between Leo Rush and Angel Garza and Pac and Hangman Page. I, I think I me. am leading Pac and Hangman Page. I think I'm gonna give it to Leo and Angel Garza. Both are very good matches. Watch both matches. Both like it's funny, I was thinking as I was watching Leo and that I was like, these are these are like basically the same match to me. <laughs> like these are both the standout matches and they're both quite similar to me. Just the go 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 aspect of it, you know what I mean? Mm. For hmm. her, a sh- better show, AW. Hmm, it's such a throw up for me, honestly, because I think I liked the middle of NXT more than you. Yeah, because I got to see someone get their head face kicked in. I got two flags this week. <laughs> That's all you need. <laughs> AW you know had no. You know flags. what? AW did have no flags, so I'm going to give it to NXT this week. <laughs> Which means it goes to our fan vote. Wait, what, what was my shtick that I was doing the first week when I went to the fan vote? Democracy or something? Democracy! Uh, AEW defeated NXT 71% to 29% with 380, uh, 340 votes. I didn't know it's, it was that much. <laughs> it's like I fully accept people are voting like like on, as I said to you, they're voting on party lines. They're voting on the show they like more. But it's Don't interesting. do that, guys, please. <laughs> yes, but we can't stop people. It's a, and people jump on the hashtags. But 
it's interesting. Every week, the first like 30 to 60 votes, NXT kills AEW. I don't know why this happens, but like the, the, the people that vote in this poll early go heavily NXT and it's like 80 20 NXT. Do you know why I think that might be? Uh, the hashtag for NXT is more popular. Well, yeah, all right, thanks. <laughs> was that what you were going to say? <laughs> that was what I was going to say. <laughs> I was going to say, I think WWE fans are more likely to be patrolling through the WWE NXT hashtag than AEW fans are to go through the Dynamite hashtag. Mm, that's that's also my theory. So we're, we're, we're in sync there. I really thought I was going to have something there, and you just... <laughs> I know you too well. All Elite Wrestling Full Gear. What do you think of I- it? Um, oh, we're gonna break it down, or are we just gonna do an overall thought? Uh, we'll do overall thoughts. Um, as an overall show, everything that I thought I was gonna like, I liked, mm-hmm. <laughs> and some things were kind of meh. I like the main event a lot. I have some, I, I had some thoughts on the Twitter that got some <laughs> reactions. Did you <laughs> um, ask me to retweet them? Wh- why are you gonna call me out like that? You're welcome for the numbers, pal. I, I, I did it because I know you. I wanted the discourse, and I thought yeah. your followers could offer the discourse because no one follows me. As you thought, did you thought people that follow me would be just mad online? That's and fair. It, to be fair, they weren't really mad, but I did have some nice discussion about it. Mm. Uh, for people who don't know, I referenced the, the Gargano Champa feud with the match as both being examples of just spectacles and overindulgence in wrestling but i thought that omega and mox was better because it wasn't telling me that it's some like high art storytelling while it was doing it they're just dragging themselves through glass yeah that's fine like just do that it's more fun but yeah as a whole show it's not my favorite AEW show by any means like of the big ones i think every match on this show was a little worse than i thought it would be yeah. Like, all of them. Like, across the board. I liked PNP's gear. It was cool. Yeah, are they baseball players? Is that what they're going for? Yeah, I think they were. I think it was a reference, because weren't they in, like... Where were they? Boston? They uh, really... Baltimore. Baltimore. Before that, I don't know. I got nothing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that match was probably the most disappointing match on the show, despite being pretty good. It was, like, it was flat good and you, from LAX and the you'd expect it to be better you know what it was it was worked oh. differently than I'd expect it to be worked I feel like the Young Bucks in their big tag team matches have taken too much to heart criticism of them and they end up working these like southern style tag matches instead of working like really go to Young Bucks matches yeah I wanted 2013 PWG here and sometimes that works. Like, the, the Young Bucks against Golden Lovers match was kind of like that, but it worked. And them and their uh, Rapungi 3K stuff was really good like that, too. Yeah, but this is the second time in AEW. It was them against the Rhodes Brothers, and now here again, where yeah. they've worked matches like that, and they haven't been particularly great. All right, to be fair, I'm going to play a bit of devil's advocate here. Okay. As far as criticism goes, right? those matches were not as good as we'd expect, right? Yeah. But they got the same exact response for when they did the crazy PWG six mans with Laredo Kid and the Lucha Brothers and for the Lucha Brothers tag match. So they've done both styles and both have been kind of meh at this point. Maybe it's not necessarily the style of match. Maybe there's just some sort of Young Bucks fatigue. You think the Young Bucks are bad? Like the, the latter match with the few Lucha Bros was amazing. And like the TV match, which was very much a the, the six man tag with Kenny against uh, the hybrid two and Kip Sabian was very much like that PWG style of just spot, spot, spot. And that match was also great. So, like... And the Young Bucks against Private Party was very much a match like that. And that was also great. So, like, just so do m- Young Bucks matches. Stop doing Southern tags. Maybe they should stick to that style, but, like, go shorter. <laughs> yeah, 21 minutes was too long. Just do a 13, especially in the opening match of a paper. Like, this match they opened with a 21-minute tag, followed by an 18-minute Hangman page and pack match. And then yeah. I'm like... And then Sean Spears and Joy Janela was only 12 minutes, but felt like 65. <laughs> to be fair, I'm a firm believer in the two most important matches of the first and last match. But, like, don't have the first match be 21 minutes. Oh, well, like, you can have the first match be 21 minutes, but don't have the second match be 18. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the AW have pacing problems. Like, the, 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 the worst offender was Fight for the Fallen. That show was dreadfully paced on every level. Yeah. And the, this this also had the same pacing problems, where every everything on this show felt too long. 
Except Rio Emi Sakura is probably the only exception. That felt maybe almost a smidge too short. I think if they tacked on another two minutes onto what they did, that match would have been even better. I thought that they had a very good match. They could have had a great match. But other than that, every match on the show was too long. Yeah. Well, that's been like a pretty consistent uh, point for mm. AW and their big shows at this. I don't want to say point again, but point. So overall, for a show, give me a grade. Give me a letter grade for the show. Uh, C plus B minus. Yeah, I was thinking B minus. Where does it rank? Uh, it's worse than All Out. It's worse than Double or Nothing. It's probably on. It's probably worse than F- uh, Fighter Fest. So I would have said mm. it's better. Than, it's better than Fight for the Fallen. So I'm gonna say second worst. I'm gonna say third worst. I'm gonna Which say it's also- better than the, better than the two B shows, but the worst big show. So yeah, far. it's easily the worst of the big three. Yeah. Mm. And soon we'll be finding out what the next one is. I'm surprised they didn't announce it at Full Gear. I don't know, yeah. It'll, what do you think, what reference do you think it's going to be? Uh, I don't know, some, d- 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 it's going to be a BTE story. <laughs> it's going to be a BTE story. <laughs> it's going to be full, like, Toy Story parody, but a pay-per-view. Very good. Isn't that what or we all want in the long run? <laughs> or can people find you on the internet, Liam? Uh, find me wherever you want. Find me at L A R R I K N. Find me at my behind the voice acting site as Liam J. <laughs> I'm on that. <laughs> cool. If you, want, if you want me for that, um, do you find list, me. Do you list this podcast on that site? I don't. I should. Hey, it is a pretty good example of your voice. <laughs> I do talk for a time on it. Though I, I will say, I every time I uh, I drop our respective sound files onto the, the, audacity, the audacity thing, it's like, oh, I talk much more than him. I should probably let him talk more. <laughs> well, it's, the thing is, like, when it's something that's, like, I'm kind of just met on, I really don't have a lot to say about it. You but it's like, but as you can see, like, when we were talking about the Kenny Omega New Japan video, I had a lot to say on that because that was something that I was actually very passionate about. But I, I'm sorry, I, I, don't, I don't have the same thoughts about Zia Lee and uh, Aaliyah. She kicked her in the face. It was funny. Yeah. Well, okay. What well, I don't say it's funny. Funny is probably the wrong word. Yeah, that's a bit. That's a bit full on. It's a bit full gear. And Garrett, where can they find you? They can find me on Twitter at Garrett Kidney G A or E T T K I D N E Y. They can find the podcast on Twitter at War Games Pod. If you'd I like to listen that. to more all of the wrestling coverage, you can hear full, full gear, full gear, full reviews. And other assorted ratings and business and other, of course, AEW Dynamite thoughts on everything Elite every Thursday night. You can also listen to Shake Them Ropes for all your WWE coverage every Saturday. Thanks for listening.